Lions and baboons are increasingly roaming African cities, but that's just the tip of a much deeper issue. Each year, humans confront a surge of invasive species. What's driving this ecological challenge? And what price are we paying in this struggle to coexist? Stick around to uncover the answers in today's video. Deep in South Africa's forests, an unseen threat lurks as you walk unaware. The Chakma baboon, an invasive species with sharp fangs and lightning-fast movements, might be watching. Sharing 91% of their DNA with humans, these baboons are not only clever but also highly dangerous. They primarily eat fruits and are constantly on the hunt for food. If you're carrying a snack, don't be shocked if they try to grab it. Reacting could turn the encounter into a dangerous clash for survival. When a baboon approaches, the best response is to avoid eye contact, refrain from showing your teeth, drop an item, and slowly retreat. In wildlife reserves, experts have started training farmers and visitors on these baboon safety tips. Hunting chakma baboons might seem extreme, but for many South African communities, it's a critical means of survival. When confronting a chakma baboon, skilled hunters step in to protect communities, though even professionals can falter without proper preparation. Hunters use defense barriers, typically 1.8 to 2.4 meters tall, to shield against attacks. Costing between $100 and $300, these barriers are a vital investment for those hunting in Africa. Yet the core question lingers, are humans fueling this conflict? Are we gaining from encroaching on this wilderness? Or are we bearing the heavy cost of our choices? Hunting baboons requires more than bravery. It demands a big game hunting permit. Hunters ensure their Winchester 308 or H&H Magnum 375 rifles are ready, powerful enough to down a baboon with one accurate shot. Precision is critical, a single error could land the hunter in the hospital. Baboons travel in groups, and an injured one might trigger a fierce group attack. There's no margin for mistakes in this high-stakes survival challenge, where only sharp instincts and accuracy keep the hunter safe. After securing the permit, hunters don't act hastily. They prepare a special bait made from corn, gelatin, and fermented fruit. A mix with an irresistible scent that's highly effective at attracting baboons, who are keenly sensitive to smells. The hunter carefully sets the bait in an ideal location, maintaining complete silence, entering a tense waiting game. The bait is placed, but the critical moment arrives only when the baboon, curious, approaches, drawn by the unfamiliar, enticing aroma. The air grows thick with tension as the hunter steadies their breath, observing the baboon's every move. Each arrow notched, each pull of the bow, could determine life or death, not just for the baboon, but for the hunter's own survival. A single misstep, a brief loss of focus, could unravel everything in this delicate balance between the clever baboon and the hunter facing a life and death challenge. Hunting isn't the only approach to manage invasive species. Sterilization has emerged as an alternative aiming to curb animal populations without killing them. However, this method requires government support and involves high costs. While sterilization may work temporarily, its long-term success is uncertain, especially with species that reproduce quickly. Hunting, though debated, remains a direct and immediate way to control invasive species. So, can sterilization fully address the problem, or will we keep grappling with this cycle? The solution remains unclear. Can we discover an effective way to manage these invasive species without losing balance? Complex ethical dilemmas arise when dealing with invasive species. Giraffes, a towering invasive species stretching up to 5.85 meters with their long necks and unique spotted patterns, have been rapidly expanding across Africa's savannas. Once hailed as a conservation triumph, their numbers have now surged to unsustainable levels, creating unforeseen challenges for the ecosystem. Over the past two decades, giraffe populations in parts of southern Africa have grown by over 30%. As their numbers rise, their feeding habits are significantly reshaping the natural landscape. They strip leaves and branches from acacia trees, which are crucial for birds and primates as food and shelter. Over time, these vital trees can't regrow quickly enough, leading to habitat loss, food shortages, and disrupted migration paths for many species. Scientists estimate that in areas with dense giraffe populations, canopy cover has dropped by nearly 25% in just 15 years. To manage this growing giraffe population, controlled hunting has been suggested as a potential solution. If done responsibly, this approach could help restore ecological balance. 
In several Southern African countries, there are designated zones where giraffe populations are closely monitored to prioritize conservation goals. Hunting in these areas is strictly regulated, with set quotas and seasons to prevent overhunting while ensuring a healthy giraffe population that supports biodiversity. You might think wild animals stay far from humans, but that's not true. They're getting closer, and not for friendly visits. The black bear, once a prevalent invasive species in North America's forests, is now encroaching on residential areas at a startling rate. In 2023 alone, reports of black bears entering suburban neighborhoods spiked by 40%, causing chaos like tipping over trash cans, damaging property, and even entering homes. This surge in black bear numbers signals shrinking habitats and scarce food sources. These bears no longer fear humans. Instead, they see human homes as easy meals. One effective way to keep black bears out of residential areas is by using bear-proof trash bins. Regions that have adopted these bins have seen up to an 80% drop in bear intrusions within just two years. Additionally, installing electric fences around high-risk zones can deter black bears effectively. Fences standing 1.5 to 2 meters tall, with voltages between 6,000 and 7,000 volts, create a strong barrier to repel bears without causing serious injury. In specific cases, local authorities may permit regulated hunting to manage bear populations and discourage them from entering residential areas. However, this is typically a last resort, use when other preventive measures fail or when bears become too aggressive and threaten human safety. By combining these approaches, communities near black bear habitats can greatly reduce risks, ensuring safety for both people and wildlife. Across many U.S. states, feral hogs have become one of the most destructive invasive species, threatening agriculture and natural ecosystems. With an estimated population exceeding 6 million, these wild pigs cause around $2.5 billion in damages yearly, ruining crops, damaging irrigation systems, and spreading harmful diseases to livestock and even humans in some cases. Feral hogs are highly intelligent, adaptable, and reproduce rapidly. A single female can produce over 20 piglets annually. They often travel in large groups, mainly at night, making traditional control methods like fencing or trapping less effective over time. One of the most direct and impactful control methods currently used is aerial hog hunting by helicopter. With a skilled pilot and a trained marksman, teams can eliminate hundreds of hogs in. A quick two to four hour flight offers a bird's eye view enabling broad surveillance and swift action to target feral hogs before they scatter or vanish into dense brush. Meanwhile, traditional ground-based hunting remains a key strategy. Licensed hunters and local landowners rely on rifles, tracking dogs, and mechanical traps to handle hog populations in smaller or busier areas. In many states, year-round unlimited hunting is allowed, encouraging communities to safeguard their land. Night hunting, when hogs are most active, gets a boost from thermal scopes and night vision gear, enhancing both efficiency and safety. Beyond traditional methods, cutting-edge tools are making a difference. Remote-controlled smart traps, motion-sensing cameras, and GPS tracking are now used across affected regions to monitor and manage hog numbers in smarter, more humane ways. It's not just feral hogs, baboons in Africa, giraffes beyond their natural range, on North American black bears all exert heavy pressure on local environments, humans, and native wildlife. But we don't have to depend only on aggressive tactics. We can tackle this challenge differently. By harnessing knowledge, modern technology, and creative sustainable approaches, we can significantly lessen the impact of invasive species while preserving the delicate balance of our ecosystems. Imagine farmers like my friend Raj in Texas, who uses smart traps to protect his crops without firing a shot, proof that innovation works. Let's take action now to shield our crops, preserve biodiversity, and ensure our communities thrive for years to come. Spread the word by sharing this video with friends and join the discussion on protecting our natural spaces. What's your take on the best way to handle invasive species? Together, we can shape the future of wild areas by contributing solutions to this growing issue. Don't miss out. Subscribe to the channel to catch upcoming videos where we'll dive into conservation efforts and the lives of wildlife worldwide. Aerial hunting provides a unique advantage, covering vast areas efficiently as teams track hogs from above. On the ground, hunters work with precision, using dogs to corner hogs and traps to capture them humanely. 
night operations, aided by advanced optics, target hogs when they are most vulnerable, while technology like GPS helps map their movements for better control. These combined efforts show how communities can adapt, blending old skills with new tools to coexist with nature's challenges.